I'll see you guys in the dark. This all started at a convention, and it's technically still going. My boyfriend, Damien, was dressed as a character from a game that isn't too well known, so we both assumed no one would recognize him. Lo and behold, about halfway through the second day, we hear someone call said character's name, and we see someone dressed as another person from that game come bounding towards us with a friend in tow. They introduce themselves, I'll call the cosplayer Arena, and their friend Hilda, and we all started chatting. We became fast friends, and we spent the rest of the con hanging out. When it came time to leave, we exchanged Discord information, and would continue to talk to each other daily. Damien and I, as well as Rena, all decided to head to another con together near the end of October. As the days progressed, Rena became infatuated with both Damien and I. Mostly Damien, but I don't think they would have admitted that. Neither of us acknowledged the warning signs. They became comfortable with us after only knowing us for about a week. They would constantly tell us they loved us, despite not really knowing us. Whenever we would hang out, they would act as if we were dating. They would cling to Damien's arm in public, and give evil eyes to anyone who got too close. They called themselves obsessive, telling us that all of their previous relationships had failed for a good reason, and insisting that we would learn to hate them eventually. We ignored all of this, and I tried to convince them that they were hurting themselves with negative thoughts and that they were worthy of love. I believe my first mistake was telling them that I loved them. I'm going to tell you, I love you if I think that you're a good person. That's just something that I do. But they took it to heart, and not in a good way. We enabled them, consoling them every single time we spoke, because they always had something negative to say about themselves. Call me naive, but I want everyone to be happy, and to get along, and to love themselves. So when I see someone beating themselves up, I feel like I have to help them. Almost every other thing that Rena said was self-deprecating. And they explained to us that they were raised to think that they were useless and unlovable. They poured their heart out to us despite us barely knowing each other, and I respected that. I don't want to say I pitied them, but I will admit that I felt bad, and I desperately wanted to help them to better themselves, and to learn to be happy. No matter what I said or did for them, Nothing ever changed. The real red flag started popping up at the convention this month. We just got back from it today. And boy, was it a wild ride. We didn't get to do anything that we had originally planned. Rena was fixated on the idea that they had come with us to this convention simply in order to have sex with Damien. They didn't even care about the con itself. They just wanted to be with us as often as possible. And they wanted to get intimate with a man they hardly knew anything about. Damien ended up having to fake being in a bad mood every time they brought it up, just to get them to drop it. It upset me greatly to see him like that, and because I have a tendency to take others' emotions onto myself, I had an awful time at a con that I normally would have enjoyed. He didn't get the chance to tell me he was faking it, because every time he tried to tell me or message me about it, there Rena was, getting all up in his space. They gave us presents while we were there, though. I got a lovely necklace, which I now wear with my other ones, and Damien got a bottle full of little pill capsules, each adorned with a different smiley face, and each containing a unique love letter. Rena had insisted that he open at least one of them while we were at the convention, but he told them he didn't want to. In the hotel bed that night, Rena told me that they were going to kill themselves so they wouldn't have to leave us, among other things like this. I can barely recall the conversation, as I was so freaked out by what they were saying, but they were behaving in a threatening and manipulative manner. We had to bring Rena to Hilda's house after the con, and Damien's car stalled and got flooded because of a bad storm. Rena's response to this was to have a breakdown and scream and cry about how they ruin everyone's life they walk into, and how they were awful and they should just end themselves. We were stranded there for over three hours, and not once did they stop. It was the most uncomfortable I've been in a very long time. Initially, when we got home, he had decided that he would just throw the love letter bottle away. But my curiosity got the better of me, and I convinced him to open it. Some of them were really sweet, like, I love your cute nose, and I love your soft, warm hugs. Others were just unsettling. I love that each passing day is another day closer to you. I love making you need me as much as I need you. I love when you tell me that you love me. 
but I need you to need me. And the real kicker, I love knowing that you couldn't leave me if you tried. That was the last straw for both of us. It's been building up since we'd met Rena for the first time, and it's definitely escalating in a dangerous direction. I've come to hate the nicknames they gave me, if the name of this accountant didn't give that away. We want to let them down easy, so as not to provoke them, because to be honest, at this point they really scare me. They know where Damien lives, and they're going to be moving out here next year. All we can really do at this point is pray that they don't do anything rash. Update. I feel like I should fill in a few blanks here. I was really tired after the convention, so my brain was sort of scrambled, and I forgot a couple of important details, and or worded some things wrong. I am non-binary, and I use they and them pronouns as well as neutral terminology, such as in by friend instead of boyfriend or girlfriend. Damien and I are in an open, polyamorous relationship. I have several partners besides him, and he has expressed interest in maybe having a second partner himself. But honestly, I think the situation has kind of thrown him off of wanting another partner. Rena has been continuously obsessive towards both of us, even going as far as to ask me to call them my girlfriend. They're gender fluid, but they commonly use more feminine terminology. We both showed interest in Rena, both romantically and sexually, and I had noticed that they had said interest as a go-ahead to go open up and come on to us. Damien resorted to faking a bad mood because it was the only thing he could think of doing in that situation. I don't blame him at all, as he gets very stressed and panicked in situations where he feels backed into a corner, and he was afraid of Rena lashing out if he told them no. Both Damien and I suffer from various issues that stem from our lackluster upbringings, so when we find ourselves in scenarios like this, we never really know what to do, and we like to act on instinct. My instinct's telling me to shut up and let people walk all over me, and his instinct's telling him to become moody in order to get people to not want to talk to him. Unfortunately, his attitude only made them want to talk to him more and he ended up feeling like he needed to apologize to them simply for trying to deter their abnormal behaviors. We're all in our 20s, which I definitely should have mentioned before. I would also like to add that both Rena and I are practicing witches, and as I was examining the bottle of love letter pills, I noticed several things that led me to believe that Rena tried to cast a love hex on Damien. I won't go too much into detail about that, but that was definitely the thing that made me realize we were dealing with something really bad. Anyone who is willing to try and cast hurtful spells like that on someone isn't a person I'm willing to associate myself with. It's scary that they would even consider doing something like that. Update number two. I believe the ordeal is over now. Rena randomly decided that they hated Damien and I for no reason and blocked us on Discord. So I contacted Hilda about it and we had a long conversation about many of the things I mentioned above. We agreed to stay friends but I told her that I won't be attempting to reconcile with Rena or anything of the sort, which she was just fine with. She confessed to me that Rena had acted in a similar fashion with most of their exes, including Hilda herself. She then told me that Rena had put their blood on each of the love letters in the pill bottle they gave to Damien. Why she didn't try to stop them is beyond me, but I'm really glad we ended up throwing those away. I don't understand why Hilda is still friends with Rena after all the messed up stuff that they've done but it's not my job to dictate people's relationships. Anyways, thanks for sticking with me during this short fiasco. I truly hope it's over and done with after all of this bullshit. This all started when I was 15 or 16. I worked at a local newspaper. I've been writing articles about stuff for fun. Didn't get paid much. Kay was one of the participants in our art contest and I have chosen her as a winner because her drawing was pretty cool. That's how we met, and I kind of fell in love with her. She wasn't a beauty at all. Mousy type, if I use this word correctly. Almost a bookworm, just without glasses. Short, simple face, boyish figure and haircut, but she was the most interesting person that I've ever met. I want to make it clear, I'm not trying to offend anyone, just trying my best to describe her type. We had a lot of things in common, such as love for anime and drawing. I haven't been dating anyone and tried to make a move on her. And somehow we ended up in a relationship. That's when things started to get messed up. She broke up with me like every week. I was confused to say the least. I tried a lot and didn't understand a thing. She came up with different stories. 
Her parents were against our relationships. Her phone was stolen. She loses consciousness from time to time, etc. She even wrote a letter to me in which she described how her grandma is some sort of psychic, and she has seen the future in which I end her, or something like that. It all was such a childish bullshit that if you think about that... Well, except maybe for her mother being kind of abusive. I've talked with her, and she really has some sort of issues with her daughter dating anyone. Kay also tried to ruin my relationship with one girl I chatted with. When things got really bad, I decided to finish this fucked up relationship and broke up with her. She said she was already with someone else. A few years later, I found a new girl, but things haven't worked for us. And guess what? My crazy ex was here for me. She texted me, and we started chatting again. I was heartbroken at the time, with no friends and no support. I've decided, okay, I'll date her until I find someone better. I know I sound like some kind of an asshole, but I was lonely and couldn't care less for a person who made me suffer so much. And guess what? Shit hit the fan again. I noticed she was lying to me again. She was avoiding some places in town. I wonder why. Maybe because another boyfriend lived or worked there. Completely ignored my problems and well-being. Became very cold at some point. We broke up again, and I found girl number three after a few years. My last ex at the moment. I hear you're asking, so what? Why are you writing about some relationships that we don't care about? She's not Yandere, just some weird girl. Just bear with me, please. I'm 25 right now, and she still tries to mess my life up. She monitors my social network pages, Twitter, DeviantArt, Facebook, you name it. She herself has four different accounts, because I blocked three that I know of. Sometimes she texts me and wants to help with my problems. Tells me things about how she's changed and how she is sorry for everything, but I'm not buying into this. I met her a few months ago in the mall, and she tried to talk to me like we're old buddies. I've been going through a very hurtful breakup. Yeah, again. And she was all cheerful and, hey, how's your life? Haven't met you in a while. I talked to her for a bit, and that's why I've known that yes, she does monitor my online presence. Me. So I wanted to ask your opinion about this. Oh yeah, I clicked this answer on your poll. So I've been watching this show. Yeah, I know, I've checked your email, which is my anime list. Okay, that's fucking creepy. Maybe you know what I've been drawing for the last couple of weeks. Yep, it was that Marvel superheroine, right? At this moment I knew. I kind of fucked up. She said this without even looking it up. Without checking her phone. The only one way she could have knew it, if she checked it beforehand. I also discovered she has seen me with my ex, the last one that I dated for one and a half years, like six times. And she remembered all of them. Guess what? I almost never seen her. Almost like she was spying on us. I confronted her about this whole situation, and she said, I'm sorry, okay? It's a bad habit of mine to check all this stuff. I'm trying to stop. I just want to watch all of this. You're an artist, after all. I want to make sure that you're okay. I said, okay, I will help you. Tell me your account name so that I can block all of them. She answered, sorry, I won't. I threatened her with some legal troubles or something and hoped that it would finally be over. Nope. She liked my response on Twitter a few weeks ago. It's like saying, hey, I'm still watching. I have a very bad feeling that she could have talked to my girlfriend and kind of convinced her to break up with me. Yes, she knows how to manipulate people and knows human psychology pretty well. But of course, I have zero evidence and my ex doesn't want to talk to me, so no answers from her either. There was one more similar situation. I have checked one anonymous chat and someone joined my room. Of course, I've been using different nicknames. It turned out it was some kind of girl. We chatted a bit, and turns out she knows me after I showed my photo. Not a very smart move, I know. That's when things got weird. I'm going to state she couldn't trace this photo back to me because it only exists on my computer. She started to tell me stuff like, Yeah, we were in the same bus once, and I got so fucking horny over you. Too bad we can't meet because of the obstacles. I thought she was some sort of troll, but she knew which places I visited and what movie I watched recently, even if it was vague and inconsistent. She said she had seen me in the shop, but you can't see shit from outside because windows placed too high under the ceilings. I was still weirded out. All I have is her email she gave me, but she never answers it. I don't think it's connected to Kay somehow, but it was very weird. 
I'm not sure if I'm risking something right now. I don't think she would try to end me, or something to be honest. But still, I'm just kind of scared. Laws in my country are not so strict as in the US or Japan, and I have no control over the situation. I almost have no evidence besides my testimony because I've been deleting all the conversations, except the last one, which is the most important one. Police won't do shit until I get stabbed or something like that. I can't delete all my accounts just because. Well, I'm kind of an artist and trying to make myself a name. I have waited for her to get tired of this stalking, but man, it's been 10 plus years. She was in relationships, and I'm pretty sure she has no interest in me as a man, because she tried to break up with me a ton of times and cheated, and didn't want to help me at all when I had depression or suicide issues. It's just like she wanted to watch, but never interrupt. But then why she always makes her move when I break up with someone? Sometimes she even texted me when I was in a relationship. Maybe she wants to play with me, and break me even more than I already am. I don't understand psychos. You may ask why I've talked to her all these times. I needed information. Why she does what she does. Why she knows what she knows, etc. She doesn't look like some sort of maniac. That's what's weird. I've tried to keep my enemies close, but like hell it works. I think about moving to different cities, but I have no money on me right now. And if she really messed my relationships up in some way, I hope karma slaps this bitch very hard. And for making me paranoid and having trust issues. Am I over-exaggerating? And she's just having some mental obsession issues? Who knows? I just really hope that she leaves me the fuck alone soon. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, like, and hit the bell for notifications on future videos and become a stalker of the night, and I'll see you next time.